This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Aaron Maté. The group Reporters Without Borders is condemning what it calls the presence of predators in Sunday's march over the Charlie Hebdo massacre. The group says it is, quote, appalled by the presence of leaders from countries where journalists and bloggers are systematically persecuted, such as Egypt, Russia, Turkey, and the United Arab Emirates. Saudi Arabia joined other Arab and Muslim countries in condemning the attack at the same time as it faced global outrage at the public lashing of jailed blogger Rafe Badawi. On Friday, Badawi received the first 50 of a thousand lashes on, uh, for his punishment for running a liberal website devoted to freedom of speech in the conservative kingdom. One cartoon shared on social networks shows a pencil being flayed by whips. Amnesty International considers Badawi a prisoner of conscience who's being punished for creating an online forum for debate. Well, joining us now in our New York studio are two guests. Lucie Morion is the program director for Reporters Without Borders, based in Paris. She arrived in the United States Monday after attending Sunday's march. She heads back to Paris tonight. She was at the site of the Charlie Hebdo attack shortly after it occurred. And with us also, Delphine Algon, U.S. director of Reporters Without Borders. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Lucie, how did you get to the site of the attack so quickly? Well, uh, at Reporters Without Borders, we were having a meeting with our director and my deputy, and uh, one of my colleagues came in and he was waving at us, uh, saying something's happening. So we told him to come in uh, with us. I was looking at him, saying like, "This better be important because we are discussing important matters." And obviously, it was. He said, uh, "We have done something terrible. It looks like they have been fired, uh, you know, shots fired at Charlie Hebdo's offices in in Paris, and there might be dead people." So the first thing we did was to grab bags, notebooks, and to run to, uh, to, to the scene. Um, when we arrived, uh, there were very, very few people. We arrived before the official delegation, the Ministry of Interior, the city, the, the mayor of Paris, and we were able to, uh, me and our uh, general director, Christophe Delois, we were able to get into the restricted areas with the officials. They knew who we are, and they thought it was important that Reporters Without Borders was, was there. So we were in front of the office. There were still bullets on the ground. Um, it was just very chaotic. Uh, and at some point, we were just wondering who's dead, what happened, and uh, a man left the office and he, he, he just uh, went into President Hollande's arms. Uh, he was he burst into into tears and he was saying Sharb est mort. Sharb is dead. He's uh, the editor of Charlie Hebdo. And talk about the response that we've seen in France since uh, over 3.7 million people marching on Sunday, uh, a record for France. Absolutely. This attack, uh, this deadly attack, was an unprecedented attack on journalists and media in France. But the response from the French society has been amazing. We've never seen that many people taking to the streets to call for freedom of the press, freedom of expression, and against all of those who are trying to silence journalists. And in, in the different gathering, we talked about Sunday. But it started on Wednesday. Reporters Without Borders and others called for a demonstration. It's the very evening uh, of, of, of that black day. And uh, people went to the streets, like hundreds of thousands of people. And they were, you know, of all origin, all ages, with people who would read Charlie Hebdo and others who would not read or not like what they would uh, publish. But at least they deemed that they had the right to do it and that sh they should not be losing their lives for Among it. Among the many signs, a uh, uh, French Muslim woman holding a sign, Je suis juif, I am Jewish. Absolutely. It started with Charlie, and then we had this terrible uh, shooting and hostage-taking situation in this cashier um, uh, shop in Paris. And the crowd was uh, singing on Sunday, I am a journalist, I am Charlie. I am a Jew. I am a policeman. And again, that was, you know, people and from all also origins. And they were who is the yes, exactly. Muslim police officer who was shot dead. Absolutely. Uh, the, the crowd was, uh, and from the very early gatherings, the crowd was cheering for journalists, but also for police who fell to protect uh, our right to freedom of information. So you flew into the New York and you're flying right out back to Paris. Why are you here? Right. Well, I, I flew in because last night we had a very important um, thing to do in, in New York. Uh, there was a gathering organized by uh, one of our uh, board members um, for an American journalist. Uh, his name is Austin Tice. He's been missing uh, in Syria for over two years. And this, well, this evening, last evening, was an opportunity to call for American um, news organizations and people to try to help us raise awareness about this case. There's a campaign to be launched soon by the advertising agency JWT, 
uh, with a blindfold. The idea is to ask for news outlets to run on their website a blindfold to show that when journalists like Austin Tice are missing, taken hostage or targeted, this is all right to information that is targeted. This is all of us that are being blindfolded. What is the U.S. government doing about Austin Tice? Well, that's a good question. We'd like to know more about what they are doing. Uh, for now, we are really frustrated that there are no such information coming out. And this is a way. The more media coverage there will be, the more pressure on the American authorities. Delphine Elgon, we last had you on Democracy Now! talking about the crackdown on journalists in the United States. Uh, can you talk about this in light of what we're seeing now in France? Uh, you know, I think we all have been uh, very moved to see so much support from the U.S. administration and from the American citizens. All these gatherings in New York, in Washington, have really uh, been relayed in France are, and are very important. Uh, and I think all French people know that American people are with us, in a sense, to defend our freedom. Yes, um, press freedom is not perfect in the U.S. It's not Press freedom is not perfect in France. Uh, but today, on, on uh, Sunday, millions of people walked in the street in France, all around the world, to show that maybe terrorists can kill journalists, but they will never kill our freedom. I'm wondering if this moment in France will lead to any kind of self-reflection in terms of the criticisms that have been leveled against Charlie Hebdo for its depiction of Muslims. They, uh, in large part, they're the underclass. They feel stigmatized already. Um, and that, uh, critics say, contributes to the insensitivity of Charlie Hebdo and how Muslims were depicted. No one questions the right to free expression, but does an attack like this, does that lead to maybe some rethinking of how Muslims are caricatured in publications like Charlie Hebdo? I think you should just uh, look at uh, all the Muslims who were gathering in the in the street on, on Sunday and who were saying, maybe I disagree with what you were saying, but I'm here to say that you had the right to say it. And uh, I, I really believe that uh, that's the freedom that we are defending and that's the fight we, we are uh, here continuing. What about the fact that you do have laws against anti-Semitism and Charlie Hebdo has been accused of, uh, of, publish, of, of uh, censoring people or uh, firing someone who wrote something, something that was considered anti-Semitic. So, uh, you know, Charlie Hebdo was a very, and is a very provocative satirical weekly. They were mocking all religions, and they are mocking all religions, all politics, and uh, they will continue to do so. Uh, and uh, and that, that's, I think, the, the important message. I mean, we are all, all often ask if they went too far, if they pushed the envelope on freedom of expression. But no, they just exercise this freedom of expression. Even in France, you point out to the laws we have, uh, it is forbidden to call for hatred, to call for violence, to stigmatize people. But you can criticize religion. It is very different be between criticizing religion and going after people criticizing Muslims, Jews, and so on. The last time uh, Charlie Hebdo was sued, they won uh, this, this case. So it means that, you know, even under French law, it was fine, and even under international standards, what they, are, they were doing was really freedom of expression. They were not abusing it, as we've heard. And it's important, again, that uh, French journalists continue to tackle these issues. The last thing we should do is to resort to self-censorship. Otherwise, I think all of, of the people who, who died for that would, would just not recognize what uh, the French media might become. That is the next challenge. We want to thank you both for joining us. Lucie Morion is uh, Reporters Without Borders program director in Paris, heading back now. Uh, also, Delphine Algon, also uh, French, the U.S. director of Reporters Without Borders, and we'll link to your reports. At